Tonight, we delve into the mysteries that bind the heavens to the earth. From the protective Lamassu to the enigmatic Moai of Easter Island, from the cosmic planisphere to the stars of Orion, from the celestial Vimanas to the wisdom of Enki. Join us as we unravel the threads of an ancient tapestry woven by beings beyond our understanding. Welcome to the Anunnaki Connection. Giant, winged, human-headed bulls served as guardians of the Anunnaki cities and palaces. Walking by, they almost seemed to move. Between these courtyards and halls, punctuating these scenes of power and prestige are massive pairs of doorway sculptures called Lamassu. The Lamassu are distinctive to Neo-Assyrian architectural sculpture. Although the creatures which they represent have a long history in the ancient Near East, dating to the early dynastic period, and several pairs of them survive to this day. The remains of more than 100 Lamassu have been identified at Neo-Assyrian palace sites. Because of their massive size and formidable form, since the discovery of Neo-Assyrian palaces in the 19th century, they have been a source of awe and fascination, even living on in art deco architecture of the 20th century. The Lamassu, a protective hybrid monster with the bearded head of mane, a crown of a god, and the winged body of either a bull or a lion. They are massive, up to 20 feet tall and weigh as much as 30 to 50 tons. Remarkably, each is carved from a single slab of limestone. The face of the Lamassu is broad, with a strong nose and thick eyebrows, which are double arched across his whole forehead. The massive beard is represented as thickly curled and braided, nearly doubling the size of the Lamassu's face. His wide eyes look straight out over the head of the viewer, as if engaged in matters beyond the human realm. His crown, feather-topped, is decorated with rows of rosettes, a motif associated with divinity and possibly the goddess Ishtar, and set with a double-horned crown, marking the Lamassu as divine. His pointed bovine ears, ringed with gold hoops suspending beads, emerge from beneath the crown as well as long flowing locks, which end in rows of tight curls, giving a sense of buoyancy. The fur of the bull's body is also richly curled, although in very organized straight rows, which run along its breast, back, side, and rear flank. Even the Lamassu's tail is curled and braided. The huge cloven feet of the Lamassu show him both standing and walking, courtesy of the carving having five legs instead of four. This is to present a kind of split view. When one approaches the Lamassu from the front, they look as if they are standing still, guarding the door. But when you pass between them, you see all four of their legs walking forward. On two panels between the hind legs of the Lamassu is a long inscription in cuneiform called the Standard Inscription. This is a statement listing the victories and virtues of King Sargon, his piety, and the ways in which the gods have favored him. It also threatens a curse on whomever should seek to harm his palace. What is so awe-inspiring about these sculptures is not only their size, but the powerful clarity with which they are sculpted, and the terrifyingly precise repetition of forms. Curls and horns are incised with deep, powerful cuts in high relief and smoothed into sharp readability. The strict linear mathematical arrangement of feathers, curls, and rosettes gives the Lamassu a perfected restraint, humanizing the frightening and chaotic hybridity. Possibly the most terrifying and impressive aspect of the carving of the Lamassu, however, is the precision of its sculptural repetition. Dating to an era much before cut and paste, or any sort of mechanical reproductive methods in sculpture, we find the craftsmen of the Lamassu were masters of scrupulous and endlessly repetitive imitation. Easter Island harbors one of the world's most perplexing mysteries, the Moai statues. 
towering figures carved from volcanic rock. Their creation and transportation defy simple explanation, prompting theories that link their existence to extraterrestrial intervention. This speculation is fueled by the islanders' legends of mana, a mystical force used to mobilize these stone giants. Rapa Nui is often described as the navel of the earth, a concept that resonates with the Anunnaki's reputed search for Earth's pivotal energy points. These points, according to some theories, form a global grid of sacred sites, with Easter Island marking a significant node. This alignment suggests a deliberate pattern, hinting at an ancient global civilization, or perhaps at the guiding hand of the Anunnaki. Among the most fascinating aspects of Anunnaki lore is their use of advanced technologies. One such theory suggests the Anunnaki employed sonar technology to manipulate massive stones, a concept that could shed light on the construction of both the Moai statues and other megalithic structures around the globe. The origins of the Moai statues remain shrouded in mystery. While some researchers attribute their construction to the ingenuity of Polynesian settlers, Others speculate on extraterrestrial involvement, particularly the Anunnaki's, whose reputed mastery over stone and sound could explain the statue's existence. Legends from Rapa Nui suggest the Moai walked to their current locations. This tale aligns intriguingly with the Anunnaki's supposed sonar technology, capable of levitating and moving massive stones. Could this ancient narrative hold a kernel of truth about lost technologies? Some of the Moai statues feature distinct bearded figures, an anomaly among the Polynesians. This iconography echoes the depictions of the Anunnaki in ancient Mesopotamian artifacts, suggesting a potential cultural exchange or even direct influence from these celestial visitors. Did ancient Sumerians observe and record the impact of an asteroid over 5,000 years ago? This circular stone cast tablet was recovered from the 650 BC underground library of King Ashurbanipal in Nineveh, Iraq in the late 19th century. Long thought to be an Assyrian tablet, computer analysis has matched it with the sky above Mesopotamia in 3300 BC and proves it to be of much more ancient Sumerian origin. The tablet is an astrolabe, the earliest known astronomical instrument. It consists of a segmented disc-shaped star chart with marked units of angle measure inscribed upon the rim. For over a century and a half, the tablet, known as the planisphere, has puzzled scholars. Its significance was unlocked when authors Alan Bond and Mark Hempsell reinterpreted the cuneiform text, suggesting it documented the Kofel's impact this event, which resulted in a massive landslide in Austria without leaving a typical impact crater, had long baffled geologists and astronomers alike. The planisphere tablet, with its intricate drawings of constellations and celestial notations, serves as a testament to the advanced observational skills of the Sumerians. Using modern computer simulations, researchers have reconstructed the night sky as it appeared over Mesopotamia on the eve of the impact revealing the meticulous records kept by Sumerian astronomers of an object large enough to be noted in detail as it hurtled towards Earth. The trajectory and size of the asteroid, as recorded on the tablet, align with the geological evidence found at Kofels. The asteroid's low angle approach and subsequent explosion over the Austrian Alps explain the absence of a crater and the extensive landslide that puzzled scientists for centuries the impact's repercussions would have extended far beyond the immediate blast zone, with the potential to ignite fires and cause widespread devastation across the Mediterranean region. Orion, the Hunter, a constellation that has captured the human imagination since time immemorial. It's within this cosmic expanse we explore the tantalizing theory that perhaps Orion was more than just a cluster of stars. Perhaps it was the cradle of the Anunnaki, 
ancient alien beings whose influence on early human civilizations remains a topic of fascination and debate. First, we venture to ancient Egypt, where Orion was associated with Osiris, the god of rebirth and the afterlife, and the stunning alignment of the pyramids of Giza with the stars of Orion's belt points to a celestial significance, a stargate between earth and the divine. Next, we cross to the sands of Mesopotamia, where the Sumerians revered Orion as the shepherd of heaven. Here, the epic tales of Gilgamesh intertwine with the stars, hinting at a connection between the celestial and the terrestrial, where the Anunnaki are said to have first made their presence known. In the far reaches of Mesoamerica, the Maya civilization charted the stars with astounding accuracy. They saw in Orion's embrace the fire of creation, a cosmic hearth around which the gods convened, perhaps the very gods who walked among them. The ancient Greeks wove tales of Orion, the hunter, a giant granted the honor of the night sky by the gods. His constellation was a reminder of the deeds of heroes and the gods' favor, a celestial narrative echoing the Greeks' deep-seated belief in the divine's intervention in human affairs. In the cold, clear nights of Scandinavia, the Vikings saw in Orion's belt the resting place of their gods. This constellation was a guide for their nocturnal voyages, a sign that the watchful eyes of the gods were upon them, guiding their oars and their destinies. The Dogon people of West Africa held a profound knowledge of Sirius, Orion's cosmic companion, their understanding of the heavens seemingly impossible without sophisticated equipment, hints at a divine tutorship, perhaps by the very Anunnaki themselves. Lastly, in the Far East, Chinese astronomers saw in Orion's stars the forces of yin and yang in balance, a cosmic equilibrium from which life and order emerged. This celestial harmony was crucial to the emperor's mandate, a divine right to rule mirrored in the stars. These seven tapestries of human culture, woven with the threads of Orion, suggest not mere coincidence, but a shared celestial influence. Could it be that the Anunnaki, those ancient alien beings, hailed from this very constellation? Were they the architects of early human advancement, guiding us from the stars, leaving their mark in the form of Orion, a beacon for all humanity to see and wonder? As we transition from the shadows of Mesopotamia to the remote isles of the Pacific, let us ponder the Lamassu's protective gaze. What secrets do these celestial guardians hold? And how do they connect to the silent stone giant standing guard over Easter Island? Stay tuned as the mystery unfolds. From the ancient soil of Easter Island, we cast our eyes to the heavens. The planosphere, a map of the cosmos, offers a celestial guide. But what links these starry realms to the legends of the Anunnaki? The Orion connection beckons us to look closer, to see beyond the stars. In the dance of the constellations, Orion holds a clue. But our journey does not end here. From the celestial to the terrestrial, we explore the Vimanas, flying chariots of the gods, giant flying cities in the sky said to roam the heavens like celestial chariots, legends of ancient nuclear weapons capable of incinerating entire civilizations, whispered across the sands of time. Vimanas, ancient flying machines described in the sacred texts of civilizations long lost to the sands. Described in the Sanskrit texts of Hindu and Buddhist traditions, Vimanas are flying machines that defy conventional understanding. These ancient accounts portray Vimanas as a fusion of modern stealth aircraft and flying saucers, capable of extraordinary feats such as interplanetary travel and high-speed maneuverability. The descriptions of Vimanas bear striking similarities to modern technological concepts such as stealth aircraft and ion thruster propulsion systems. 
NASA's current research into ion thruster type spacecraft, powered by solar energy and utilizing mercury particles, echoes the propulsion methods hinted at in ancient texts. Some theorists propose that Vimanas could be evidence of ancient extraterrestrial influence on human civilization. The parallels between Vimana descriptions and modern aerospace engineering hint at the possibility of advanced knowledge imparted by extraterrestrial visitors. Some dismiss Vimanas as mere allegory, while others believe that these ancient marvels were more than just stories. Legends speak of epic battles waged in the heavens, where Vimanas clashed like thunderbolts amidst the roiling storms of war. Were these battles fought with weapons of mass destruction, or were they merely figments of a collective imagination? As humanity peers through the veil of time, searching for answers to the mysteries that shroud our past. One thing remains certain. The enigma of Vimanas continues to captivate the imagination, inviting us to journey into the realms of the unknown. Enki, also known as Ea in Akkadian and Babylonian mythology, renowned as the god of water, knowledge, and creation. A principal deity, Enki's story is rich with tales of innovation, wisdom, and cunning. He is credited with the creation of mankind, the establishment of Eridu, the first city of Sumer, as well as the development of the Tigris and Euphrates rivers through a network of canals. According to interpretations of Sumerian texts, Enki played a pivotal role in the creation of humans. The Anunnaki, including Enki, were in search of resources on Earth. Faced with labor challenges, Enki proposed the creation of a worker species to alleviate the Anunnaki's burdens. Using his advanced knowledge in genetics and biology, he engineered humans as a hybrid species. This process involved the genetic manipulation of the Anunnaki's DNA with that of Homo erectus, the most advanced terrestrial species at the time. Enki's expertise in science enabled this ambitious project resulting in the birth of Homo sapiens, beings capable of performing the tasks needed by the Anunnaki, while also possessing a degree of sentience and intelligence. Enki's relationship with his creation was complex and multifaceted. Unlike some of the Anunnaki who viewed humans merely as servants, Enki developed a paternal and protective attitude towards humanity. This emotional attachment is highlighted in numerous myths, where Enki intervenes to guide, protect, and even educate humans. In the Epic of Gilgamesh, Enki plays a crucial role in the tale of the Great Flood, a narrative echoed in various cultures worldwide. It is here we witness Enki's defiance of the decision made by the Anunnaki Council to let a catastrophic flood wipe out human civilization. Moved by compassion, Enki chose to save Utnapishtim, the Sumerian equivalent of Noah, by warning him about the impending deluge. He instructed him to build an ark capable of saving his family, along with a collection of animals and plant species to ensure the continuity of life post-flood. Enki's actions in this tale underscore his rebellious nature and his willingness to challenge the consensus of the gods to protect humanity. The representation of Enki as a serpent or being associated with serpents is a recurring motif in ancient cultures, symbolizing wisdom, life, and rejuvenation. This symbolism reflects Enki's role as a bringer of knowledge and enlightenment, akin to the serpent in the biblical story of Adam and Eve. This serpentine symbolism extends beyond Mesopotamia, appearing in various cultures and mythologies around the world from the feathered serpent Quetzalcoatl in Mesoamerican cultures to the Naga in Hindu and Buddhist traditions, the serpent emerges as a symbol of wisdom, healing, and connection to the divine. These global serpent motifs may trace back to a collective memory of Enki, his deeds, and his association with the fundamental aspects of life and knowledge. In weaving together these narratives, we uncover a tapestry of myth and speculation that challenges our understanding of ancient history and the origins of civilization.
as we ventured through the intricate tapestry of narratives and epochs that define the Anunnaki connection. It's now time to circle back and coalesce these threads into a coherent timeline. From their celestial descent to Earth nearly half a million years ago, to the genetic engineering of humanity, the dawn of Sumerian civilization, and their eventual enigmatic departure, each milestone has contributed to a complex narrative that intertwines with the very fabric of human history. Let's distill these vast spans of time and events into a consolidated chronicle, capturing the essence of the Anunnaki's purported legacy on Earth. Approximately 450,000 years ago, the Anunnaki, in search of gold to shield their planet Nibiru's atmosphere, arrive on Earth. Their first settlement is established in the Persian Gulf region. Initial phase. They begin their operations by mining gold in the southeastern Africa region. Due to labor difficulties, they genetically engineer Homo sapiens by combining their DNA with that of existing hominids to create a more suitable workforce. Around 300,000 years ago, the engineered Homo sapiens start to spread across the globe, marking the beginning of diverse human civilizations. The Anunnaki impart knowledge of agriculture, craftsmanship, and the rudiments of civilization to these early humans. Circa 200,000 years ago, major Anunnaki centers and cities begin to emerge in Mesopotamia. This includes places like Eridu, Nippur, and Uruk, with each city dedicated to a specific Anunnaki overlord. The Anunnaki hierarchy, resembling a pantheon of gods, becomes evident in Sumerian texts. Power struggles and familial disputes among the Anunnaki mirror the tumultuous tales of gods in human mythologies. Around 11,000 years ago, a great deluge, a result of either Nibiru's close pass by Earth or an asteroidal impact, devastates the planet. The Anunnaki, foreseeing this event, decide to let mankind fend for themselves, saving only the DNA of Earth's creatures. After the flood, they assist humanity in rebuilding, leading to the rise of new civilizations such as Sumer, Egypt, and the Indus Valley. Post-Deluge. Following the deluge and the subsequent re-establishment of human societies, the Anunnaki's direct involvement with humanity begins to wane. Over millennia, their presence diminishes, transitioning from active participants to observers, and eventually fading into the backdrop of human history. Their influence, however, persists through the legacies embedded in ancient texts, mythologies, and possibly in the genetic makeup of humanity. And so, as the stars wheel overhead, we close this chapter of the Anunnaki connection. But the story is far from over. The mysteries of the Lamassu, Easter Island, the Planosphere, the Orion Connection, the Vimanas, and Enki, each a piece of a larger puzzle. Until next time, keep looking beyond the horizon, for in the vast tapestry of the cosmos, the answers await those who dare to seek them. Join us next time on the Anunnaki Connection.